Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. My email is still tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for inquiring about this or any watch we offer. Reach out to me. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Back in 2013, FP Journe launched the Cantien Perpetuel based on the Octa platform. It was available in 40 and 42 millimeters. In 2020, this revised, less crowded, more upscale sterling silver dial was added to the collection. The watch you see here, the 42 millimeter option size with the 2020 to date upgraded dial is 51 millimeters from lug to lug to match its 42 millimeter diameter. It is 10.8 millimeters thick, and it has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference, it wears. It wears well, it looks good. It would easily slide underneath the dress cuff, but it is broad, being 51 millimeters lug to lug. You can see from over the top and down the barrel that if my wrist were any smaller, I would want the 40 millimeter version of this watch again. This is the 42. Taking a look at the strap, we have large rectangular scale alligator leather in medium brown with a semi-gloss finish, a monotone stitch, a folded edge, and small round scale alligator leather on the bottom. Gator on both sides is what you see from the best brands. The straps are a few hundred dollars more expensive, but because of the gator instead of calf on the bottom, the strap lasts longer. And you can see this is a Jorn factory strap, no crimping, no gouging. Jorn drills his lugs very close to the case, so a curved spring bar is used to ensure there's no impediment to the motion of the strap. It can pull straight down out of the lug. Jorn also uses pull-tab spring bars, so with your fingernail, you can pop the strap off the watch. We have a simple matching rose gold pin buckle. The case is entirely in high polish with integrated tapered lugs that turn down almost 90 degrees from the horizontal of the case band. The bezel is domed. The crown is knurled with a characteristic double dimple like a vintage crown, unsigned, but immediately recognizable as Jorn. The mid case is defined by the flange of the case back and the bezel. We have a dial that is cut on a solid disc of sterling silver. So it is galvanized, this silver white, but the dial base itself is a disc of sterling silver, like a precious metal coin. One feature that makes this different than the previous 2013 vintage dial is that the frames for the calendar, the day, the double digit date, and the month, they're actually surrounded by apertures of precious metal rather than just cut through the dial. The steel polished bezel on the early Cantien Perpetuel has been eliminated to create a dial that seems less crowded and breathes better. We have all applied rose gold, Jorn style, radially arrayed Arabic numerals with tapered Jorn style hands. We have a little concentric patterned inset power reserve indicator. Note the watch will run for 160 hours. 120 is the chronometric power reserve. So for best results, make sure you wind it when the power reserve indicator gets down to 100 and, well, when it gets down to 120 elapsed, which is zero. You can see this works a little bit different than some of the other Jorn power reserve indicators, which indicate zero when fully wound. This one indicates 120. It is the runtime remaining in the chronometric power reserve. Now we also have, let me just make sure we're out of the date change danger zone there. We also have a calendar system that mostly can be set using the crown. So you can see right here, I'm setting the day. Here, I'm setting the double digit date which has a really crisp, instantaneous jump, and a lovely font that matches the font of the dial, which matches the font of the sub-register. Really great attention to detail. Now, finally, Jorn wanted his perpetual calendar to be operable without any dimples on the side or the need to resort to tools or the temptation to set the watch with a, a ballpoint pen. So the only element that can't be adjusted through the crown is adjusted using a little tab that hides flush underneath the lug at one o'clock. Flip it all over. By the way, perpetual calendars without a moon phase, I really like this. Maximize the legibility of the aperture style calendar. In case you haven't seen, the leap year hides coaxial underneath the hands at center. So you can just see there is a stub index. That's how that works. But I love the fact that Jordan didn't feel obligated to cram a moon phase onto this. On the reverse side, the movement like the dial in the case made of precious metal, the rotor is engine turned 22 carats, and then the bridges and the plates are solid 18 carat gold. Five position adjustment, like a chronometer, Jorn boasts that his caliber 1300 keeps better time than a COSC chronometer. It's free sprung for durability with a high inertia variable 
polar moment balance. So all the adjustment done by changing the polar moment, moving, moving the bolts on the outer circumference of the balance, moving it in and out to change the turning force. That's how it's regulated. It's a very precise and shock resistant system. It beats away at three hertz. All of this pivots on 37 joules and is water resistant down to 30 meters. You could see that the bridges feature anglage on their edge. The jewel sinks are internally beveled. The screw heads are all black polished. We have engine turning in several sizes on the base plate. We have circular Cote de Genève across the bridges, and we have satination on the wheels themselves. If you love this watch, reach out to me. I am T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. This watch from a legendary brand, the man invented and made it. And only 900 watches per year are a testament to its exclusivity. Again, reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for pricing.